Uh, Suka Suri, thank you very much for accepting our invite. You have to owe two decades of expertise, passion, I'm sure, leadership that you have done over the years. And I think it's, I don't even have to mention that you're the first woman to lead a conglomerate. And women like me also really, really look up to you. Um, and uh, I think your educational background, everything that you have done uh, so far, uh, tells us that you know leadership is a part of your DNA. Uh, so we, we are privileged to get this opportunity to in interview you on leadership. So let's start a little bit about your background. Um, now today's environment is very very competitive on you know how kids are being raised, uh, how competitive education system is. What was your you know childhood and your educational experience, and did did, did you really connect the dots of where you stand right now as a person over the years? Look at today's context, including how I brought my kids. I was very conscious about it. Uh, kids are put through a hard, rigorous education system where there is over focus on the academics. Mm how many A's you get, how many A stars you get, what uni, uni you are entitled to. And they are like from the gra from grade 6, they are like engineered to get there and which school you go to, mm -hmm. who are your friends, it's all that, right? Uh, they do not encourage kids to be their best version, find their uh, skills which are not academic. Mm -hmm. uh, sports, while some parents which are very min of the minority, Inc understand the, the the benefits of getting involved in, in extracurricular activities and letting kids flourish in mm. that uh, is less of a priority. Um, and in school, I was um, we had a amazing principal, Sister Charles, who just unlocked our value. She mm. she treated us as kids, but as equals as well. Mm. Mm. And um, it was um, and sports was something she encouraged us. She made me feel valuable. So. Connecting the dots, uh, I was given so much of opportunity there. I was given so much of independence at home uh, because without without independence and uh, we couldn't we couldn't do the things we wanted. Um, and then um, I guess uh, I, I did my levels in school and then uh, started working very early. But in that time, what I picked up was I knew that it was okay to to know what you liked mm. it was okay to follow and do the things you like irrespective of the consequences mm. so i had chosen not to focus on my studies too much which <laughs> was uh, uh, i don't think i'll encourage any kid now to do that mm. but uh, that was okay so i i kind of uh, figured out but you know the best part of it i think i learned is that we learn to be excellent only with hard work mm, of course and hard work didn't only come because like i know there's a lot of ecosystem where somebody makes the sandwiches in the morning mm. or the food but it's also you waking up at five o'clock and you yeah uh, you committing and the biggest lesson compared to now i think i had was I was taught to compete with myself mm. versus competing and competing with the rest. Um, talking a little bit about family friends, you shared already a lot of things. Were there any hard decisions that you had to make, especially in your career, like choices that you had to do to balance the so-called work-life balance that everyone talks about? What were like the hard points that you had? Or how did so when I went into uni, I, I got double maths. Uh, I, I missed engineering. So when I walked into the physical science uni, I, I was somebody tried to rag me, and I walked out of the uni. Mm. So that was the first choice. It was not hard to walk out. I was just scared. I walked out. After that, the hard choice was mm. what do I? How do I pay back my mum? What do I qualify? Mm. And then I made a choice to become an accountant. Where I mean, this whole accounts thing was something I thought was boring, but I decided to do this for my mum. And that was one choice we made. And and again, I didn't sleep or do sleepless nights, right? Uh, but fundamentally, I guess I I didn't want a career, so I did it as a way of working and being able to play, do my sports. I was playing for the company. I was playing for Sri Lanka, and they allowed me to play for Sri Lanka. So you get duty leave. It's I mean, a form you of a compensation. I guess. Yeah. So imagine <laughs> having this everything in there mm. only thing which didn't match is the pay <laughs> the pay was like uh, almost non non existent <laughs> but um, 
I always wanted to be this mother having kids mm. and having this husband to take care of me mm. and you know the typical yes. Mills and Boone story. <laughs> yes. So um, and when I got married and I got quickly got pregnant I I walked into my boss's uh, office and told him now Mrs. Jayakumar I'm going to resign now mm. because I'm pregnant. Mm. And he said no I mean you can continue and we'll figure out a way you have not given birth as yet. So there th- I had to adjust my thinking because my whole uh life of what about the teenage life i was thinking i have to be a stay at home mom mm. within me mindset yeah. yeah so how do i adjust that i can manage so i didn't i took it as it came i i went through my pregnancy while working uh, i remember i used to come by bus and somewhere and call pe- from kotehen and call pt i would want to throw up so i get off a bus and throw up near a lane and then you get back into a bus but those also Chick. make you resilient right of course uh and when i had my first son i realized giving the freedom they gave me the freedom to adjust to a routine mm. so only thing they did was without talking to me suddenly fires will come early morning about five fires and i know inside me i'm very competitive mm. i don't like to keep work pending piled up yeah so they don't talk they just send the fire so <laughs> by night i in the night once the baby sleeps i work even when the baby was 2 3 weeks old i would have been working in the night and mm. doing Fishing. my work mm. but subconsciously i got into a routine and mm. what what where did i find my sweet spot there i could be the mother i wanted mm. and i was also keeping my mind active mm. so i realized that it's about you finding your balance mm. and the environment giving you the space to find your balance that's right mm. it's not if somebody told me you to log in at 8 o'clock do this at 9 o'clock and mm. that's my baby's bath time mm. i wouldn't have done it mm. it was just that the files are sent do it and send it back not even when but i would want to do it within 24 hours or 48 hours and not be in f seen as inefficient mm. that's my personal uh part of my dna is mm. that i would love i don't like to be inefficient i want to be efficient i want to be compet- i want to win mm. Mm. i want to do things well i hate mediocrity mm. even on myself right the biggest uh, i think difficult choice i made was to file for divorce i was separated i didn't need mm. divorce but uh that being okay with that stigma of sri lankan to know as you are a divorcee mm. versus you are separated you are a missis of somebody yes. versus you are nobody that was really losing tough. your societal safety net <laughs> that was tough mm. we, we, so i understand when women go through it i said I'll, i always tell them don't underestimate that part of it mm. that's because society doesn't support you to recover from that yes. so that was a personal tough just tough, tough choice but balancing kids I don't I wouldn't say it's tough mm. it's just that you should be okay with the decisions you make mm. if you're not okay is that's why it's tough so you have to carry you have, your decisions you have to carry your mm. decisions there's no point complaining that the company didn't do this mm. because look reality is you work mm. reality is you have to be able to be there for your children the, the moments they want um if you want to come at 10 o'clock that's fine get your work done after that so uh, so I wouldn't say that's tough but the the art of finding your balance on different moments of your time mm. day different decisions you have to make based on your family and your work it's a practice it's a practice it's a practice um we started your career journey from there i mean where you stand today as the group ceo of hema uh, holdings what were like the key pivotal points in your career like the big moves that you intentionally or unintentionally it has happened over the time but what were like the key key steps maybe you took in your career over like 20 plus years of experience you have one intentional choice i made and it worked out for me mm. um one time i was in just before i joined hemas i was in a leisure sector company and um that time i was uh, separated looking after my kids and the value system of that company didn't <coughs> I didn't like it. Mm. And it was only one year and that time you have your probation for one yes. year or something like that. <coughs> and then I told them um and I, I told my boss off as well but uh, I told them look at probation I'm not going to stay. Mm-hmm. I'm walking out. Mm. And they sent me my confirmation letter and I just said no and I walked out. I didn't have a job with me. Mm. 
I had two kids, uh, this would have been 2002, right? I uh, would be just nine years old, two kids, I didn't think through it. And um, I walked out. Mm -hmm. But there was one, one client I'd known from, from um, I think uh, he was our landlord at Aramix, Mr. Rusli Hussein, amazing human being. Um, they were the owners of the Flower Road house. And he always, he used to call and check, check the old gentleman, um, Kasri, how are you? Mm. Why are you wasting time? Why are you wasting your time here? And I should say, Mr. Jose, no, <laughs> but you know, uh, that it's okay, I get paid. And then said, okay, why don't you look for a company? Call him. I say, hey, that's a family company with absolute great values. You will flourish. And I, that's the first time somebody put that name into me. Mm. I, I, I was not no looking one. at any company. Uh, the name I knew was John Keels. <laughs> and um, so I, uh, I had, that was one vacancy. I had just walked out. I just applied and I had I took my kids and went to Australia to play some masters basketball. And um, then they called me on the day I landed, I called, met them and actually firstly I was interviewed for one role and they thought I was too strong for them. <laughs> and I didn't get that job as a finance person because I contested some theory there <laughs> and they said no, no, she's too strong for the system. Mm. And then the CFO amazingly who was a woman, mm. Serena was my first boss. She saw me and said, no, somehow she has to get me in and she gave me another role. Mm. And that's how I came to Hema. So within, um, I think about three weeks of leaving, I got a job mm. and I came here. So I was in finance planned. After that, everything was unplanned. And, and again, that's because uh, this place, uh, Hema, so today you see it like this, but 20 years ago, it still was this smaller, mm. way smaller, but they still, family was important. Mm. I always proudly say they were gender blind. Mm. Wow. So because families were important, they allowed me special things because I was a single woman, I had kids mm. and it was like um, a love that I have to not I have to be there for my kids. If you have uh, director's trips with family or without family, mm. my kids were loved and I didn't even know. No. They would say, Kastri, bring your kids. Mm. And that was the family who were that time, they were executives, they mm. were running it. Mm. Um, the first move was I didn't have a choice. It was I was moved out of this finance role and told do a group role setting up shared services for the entire group. Mm -hmm. Within a year of doing it, they said become CIO or I refused to use that word CPO. Mm -hmm. Now this IT process and I was telling Hussein who is our chairman, I said I don't know anything about it. He said own it the way you know because mm -hmm. you understand business. Mm -hmm. Don't become a techie. Yes. Hire people who are good at this. Get the job done. Under you, you mm -hmm. ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. So, and you know what really the big thing about that was, that was a turning point that he gave me the okay or the license to own the seat the way I should own it. Because of my maths, maybe if you s give me a complex problem, I will just unravel it, simplify it and I'll give you a solution. Mm. So they realized that strength of mine and I did that. Um, and in that process, they understood that I had this whole leadership skill which I was bringing because I could get people around and get things done. Mm. And they started when the family wanted to move back, take a non-executive role. I was one of the first guinea pigs put out there to <laughs> run transportation. And uh, again, because of the support, I realized um, at that point, I had to give up what I was really good at, mm. that operational excellence, looking at the micro and solving it to moving up to the balcony and seeing the bigger picture, which is a struggle. I go, because my strength is that. I mm. still, there are days when they talk operational issue, my mm. gut is to tell them the solution. And I say, Kasri, move out. That's <laughs> not for you. Know. Let them solve it. Let them learn through mistakes. Mm. Um, so yeah, I guess, so most of the choices, I because I didn't, was not given a choice, somebody out there saw strengths in me. They put me through functional roles, which are different. From finance, I started moving into technology process, and um, then I moved into different industries while in it, mm. and uh, then went into leadership. Uh, mm. So I was pushed into leadership in again. First is maritime logistics mm. and transportation. I didn't even know what it was. I had mm. industry leaders who worked under me, and they were way old, older than me. Mm. But again. They had given me the confidence through my coaching that I knew what I brought to the table. Mm. I also knew what I didn't bring to the table. Mm. And I was not ashamed of it. Mm. So we were trained, of, I, I, over time I learned to own my strengths. Mm. 
and be happy to tell these are the whole load of things I'm not good at. <laughs> That's why you all are there. Yes. Up front. And, but the other one for, for CEO, of course, there was a two year heads up of we would look at you. We'll have to start developing you. Mm. It can't be, it's not going to be easy, mm. but we will support you. So that was the only planned one which I was aware. Mm. And uh, did I want any of these? <laughs> Actually, no. no. I didn't. Mm. But I wanted to be excellent in what I did. Mm. So I would have this typical conversation. So what do you want next in your career? I say, no, I would want to do very well in this. If there's no challenge, I would want another role. Mm. So it was never me sitting on somebody else's role. And I not I even looking for designations. No. It's no. about what you do on a daily basis. So this designation, I rarely use it. Mm. I, I would tell, I tell my teams also, this is my job. Mm. You all have a job. Mm. Unfortunately, this job comes with this title. Mm. Your job comes with your title. So that's it. So we all have a role to play. Mm. Building teams. I'm quite sure that you would have been around a lot. You would have inspired a lot of people around you. How important it is to build independent individuals as well as teams. How do you bring the best out of them? So I think the first thing we need to accept when you build a team, you bring a collection of unique individuals who have different strengths. Mm. We make the mistake in a corporate, we want like-minded people. You want people to agree with you. You want people, you're comfortable, not comfortable with a person who has a op different mindset, mindset or and a view of life or different view. Um, so in sports, I learned about team building only in sports. Now when I come to a corporate setting, I think the first thing I, and I, I love is that I've got used to having people from different backgrounds uh, and different uh, back, uh, experiences within the team. Um, what I find people struggle with who are not from sports is when I push back, it is, I, 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 I push back a lot on thoughts saying, look, why are we thinking like this? Is there another way? And stuff like that. Uh, in a corporate setting, I'm, they're not, it's tough for them to adjust. So mm. it takes time to understand where you're coming from. So mm. it, it's a lot of investment in for them understanding why I do that to get the better outcome. Mm. So over time, once you build it, and they're comfortable with the pushback, and each of which us push each other back, you get good results, mm. right? So the other aspect is, in a corporate setting, it's to be an excellent team. You have to have a culture that and and a kind of a a value system where we say we are not competing with each other. Mm. The competition is outside. Mm. And and fighting with, with each other, finding fault. Among departments. Yeah, if you have something to say, you are not going to agree with everybody. I'll mm. tell you, in families you fight, but because it's blood, you stick together. Mm -hmm. In a corporate, when you, you fight, it's not blood. And yeah. the tendency is you, you start talking about the person. Yeah. Uh, which I don't, I don't advocate at all. Mm -hmm. So I remember in one organize when I took over one business unit, and um, they are everybody the strong individuals, they're amazing, right? But I realized if you have sales has to get something done uh, from supply chain, it was a missile of a email or a <laughs> WhatsApp, and I'm like looking at I'm on the group and thinking, whoa, that was one missile for me. How is this one going to respond? And the problem is not going away. They are fighting with each other. If you all can't support this, supply chain is useless. Mm. That, this. So I called the two leaders and said, I'm having a ground rule here. Mm. Stop WhatsApps and emails. Talk to each other. <laughs> if you have a problem, go and solve. Mm. If you want to fight, fight. Mm. Kill each other in the room. Mm. <laughs> when you come out, you, you'll have to be on the same page. You mm. may not like one one has to give in not to be yes. on that page. Yes. You might not like the compromise. Mm. But if you decide, let's walk out and be okay. It took time, but I had this, I, I had to be very firm. Mm. To build that culture, I had to say, no this, no that. <laughs> so I guess uh, that's what I be, uh, believe in. And, and the, once you get the, car, the ecosystem where you build a leadership team, mm. and it's a team I talk about. There's no single leader. Today, if I don't have a leadership team, I would be not known as a leader. Because mm. what do I do? Am I controlling all these moving parts? I'll die. <laughs> It's just that they are controlling each of their unique parts, which mm. adds up to the group, right? And if I don't get them to work together, if I don't unleash the best. So mm. the second part is once that happens, you need to figure out what each one's um, best is or mm. what they're good at. And you have to unleash it. 
and and necessarily i'll tell you each time you walk into a leadership role um you create ripples around you because people don't know you and there's a lot of perception people there's assumptions and perceptions and the way your style impacts each one differently mm. so you should be able to step back and take feedback so that's kind of the next thing i support people to do because remember y- your success depends on how you impact the rest and get the best out of that me uh, somewhere in 2000 and when i was a cpo i think right and and they were pushing to be me be- becoming a leader in general versus a functional expert mm. we had the 360 feedback and one big mm. feedback i always get got was um kasturi we don't learn from kasturi because she's very good opposition of performance she gets things done but she's so fast and then she doesn't allow us to give our thoughts and she doesn't allow us to talk and it was like oh my god i wait for my 360 and think can you bury me because it's so much of negativity there how do i survive mm. but i learned i looked at it and i thought i realized i do this because i want to get things done fast do you usually go by gut feeling or instinct when you make decisions at office or do you usually take calculated risks consciously aware that you know this is going to put me into some little bit of trouble but i'm going to do it in this so it's a nice question right over time i developed a absolute instinct about people mm-hmm. and gut so when i recruit finally is my gut run on the person mm-hmm. right capability and everything is looked at mm. but final thing is if i have something unsettling in my instinct mm. i wouldn't i'll probe more mm. to figure it out or i'll tell hr I'll go and figure out more get get this feedback is i'm unsettled on a business decision over time i have developed intuition because mm. i've done this made mistakes um, you know been there done that kind of thing I always I would want base level of analysis and analytics done and understanding my walk aways on financials. Mm. I've heard pretty much all the questions now the fun part. Ah. Short answers only. <laughs> Short fun <laughs> papa. First thing that comes to your mind. Describe yourself in three words. Outspoken. Mm. Kind. Mm. Uh fitness freak. <laughs> Great. First three things you do as a part of your morning routine. First three things. First thing, brush my teeth. Mm. I don't even talk to anybody about that. <laughs> uh, have a cup of tea. Exercise. Exercise. If you could have a superpower, what would you want? To teleport myself to Melbourne to be with my sons. Oh. <laughs> One hidden talent you have. I can do a kandana dance very well. <laughs> I can tell you what Kadana's dance is. What is Kadana? So when you when you on the Kadada church has feast no mm. and of course there's alcohol in the catholic churches <laughs> no? at the end in the nights you see them after the alcohol <laughs> they do god. this dance. Mm. Oh my god it's like a like as if they got electric shock they do that <laughs> and I and my kids and my friends disown me so, so so in the middle of a dance floor I'll suddenly start doing a Kadana dance. Either <laughs> in three words. um a good leader who is somebody who can i always say this it says it's not about your title definitely it's about you being able to light the inner light of or in the skill sets of the others mm. understand how you can shape that each one's light mm. to create that beautiful picture you want to create So you imagine if you're creating a picture of lights you have to light each human being mm. and you put them in places and position to create that pattern so that's a person who would would be a leader mm. to light light others others but and put them and make sure that they create the shape mm. you want last round just yes and no answers only i'll go with the questions very fast have you ever sent an email to the wrong person <laughs> many times and don't talk about emails whatsapp <laughs> <laughs> messages and you want to like bury yourself yeah. <laughs> have you ever eaten someone else's lunch from office always i used to pick i won't eat the whole lunch i'll pick off from pick what lunches you want. i remember even on a tour once we stole somebody's sim symbol and it yeah. <laughs> have you ever slept in office overnight uh not exactly yeah i would have on the sap side we would have worked till about 4 so i've slept on yeah chairs and stuff um, only during those projects other than that no no 
have you ever said that someone has done a good job when they have not done a good job no have you ever fallen asleep during meetings no have you ever not prepared for a meeting by mistake uh, generally even if i had forgotten the last meet i might get delayed by 5 minutes i want to figure out what the meeting is about um so generally no no have you ever lied about your age no have you ever broken a bone my body no mm. have you ever gotten into a fight at school ha huh. <laughs> <laughs> should i answer that <laughs> i know that yeah. have you ever lost a bet yeah many times have you ever regretted an apology no have you ever pretended to be sick to get out of something many times <laughs> That's it. <laughs> We're done with the questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Kasri. <laughs> it was wonderful listening to you. Yeah, It's an honor, time. and your valuable time means a lot to us. I know, inspiring a lot of women, you know, like us. Thank you so much. Fun. They do not encourage kids to. be their best version find their uh, skills which are not academic so i had chosen not to focus on my studies too much intentionally or unintentionally it has happened over the time very <laughs> yeah and they said no no she is too strong for the system i can do a kandana dance very well <laughs> many times and don't talk about emails whatsapps <laughs> messages and you want to like bury yourself yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> Friday is a wonderful day. Yeah, you need to be a life first, too, you know. Yeah. And life, actually, I tell people, I am fun and spending time with the family because I said, if anything happens to you, mm. company will say, I'll go yes, man, something at home. So sad. Then mm. they'll replace. Your family will never replace. Yeah, no chance.